Jennifer, how are you today? I'm great. Bowie, the puppy, is uh, saying hello from the other room, everyone. So don't mind him. <laughs> so adorable, that puppy of yours. Yeah, we're going to go party and rock and roll in the park after this recording. Ooh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, speaking of, uh, mm. I thought I had a moment at the dog park the other day that just reminded me of the mentality of like bias and having a I call we I call it a team mentality where like my team is better than yours. Mm. And I heard this group of dog parents like gossiping about um Anne Hayes who just passed away. Oh. And they were just saying the nastiest things about her and and the and everybody in this little circle was just like agreeing with her. And I was like, hmm, there we go. Like they like people are just eating up that like mm. uh shock value, if you will. Mm. And yeah, and that reminds me of our topic today. Okay. <laughs> well, I you know, it's interesting that you brought that up because that came up in my, you know, little news app thing on my phone that there were a lot of people saying nasty things about her, which is so crazy to think like that after somebody dies in such a tragic fashion that, you know, mm -hmm. that, that that would be a place, but I, you know, it, but to your point and how that relates to our topic today, sometimes I wonder, you know, somebody starts that topic and then other people just kind of want to like share in that community. Mm -hmm. And so like, whether they're really like thinking through everything they're saying or not, or just wanting to be sort of agreeable to like be a part of the team, you know, it's mm -hmm. like a really big part of our humanness, maybe, you mm -hmm. know, it, it doesn't always play out very well or nicely, or like that's gossipy and that kind of thing. But yeah. sometimes I think we um, are inherently wired, mm -hmm. you know, and almost have to like check ourselves is this really how I feel or is this just what I've been told is true or just what I've heard the other people saying mm -hmm. or yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cause, uh, there's just moments in my, I guess, lead, like authority of, you know, work, right? Like people are coming to see me. So therefore giving me money to do things makes me the authority. Um, and, you know, sometimes I don't check my assumption. I just, mm. they're, they're mm. easily there. They're readily available for me to rely on, to make a decision. Yeah. Um, and all that to say, we are going to talk about something that creates a lot of bias in the fitness mm. industry, which is just this term multi-joint and single joint exercises it's not even a statement it's just like two terms right. <laughs> and there just seems to be a lot of uh teams that yes. are full are are invested in hanging on to their bias to right. create a crowd to create um follow following followership <laughs> and yeah. we're going to pick it apart today. I'm very okay. I like that very much. I yeah. Think. I, I yeah. think it's necessary because I think it's good practice then for other things that, cause it reminds me so much of like our conversation that we had with Nikki about like functional training, mm -hmm. like functional versus non-functional. Oh yeah. And like the inherent bias and just that terminology. Um, but I think that that, you know, I, so I think that there are so many like open chain, closed chain, like these binary groups that, you know, so I think that's really a great practice for us to do that today. Yes. And yeah, I think, I, I also think it brings, it breaks down one of like the principles that we're trying to hold space for in general by hosting this podcast was, which is just like thinking through what you're like asking people to mm. do or asking yourself to do. Yes. Um, and it's, um, it's not easy being principle focused, like, <laughs> um, because you, I, I constantly go back to challenging myself, um, to better, um, make decisions by my principles instead of again like falling into an assumption based um, decision making process so 
I, gosh, I cringed a lot during my uh, <laughs> note-taking. <laughs> so speaking of. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's an abundance of sound bites available for us. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Lay it on me. You know how I yeah. love sound bites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, the sound bites help us tell a story, right? Yes. So yes. I Paint have, a picture of yeah. the current state. <laughs> so I have this, um, one like picture I wanted to share a screen grab from okay. a and this is on this can be on YouTube just so okay. people are actually gonna see this stuff. Okay. All right, screen share. Okay. I can do this. So there he is. Um Ah, okay. Yes. So I don't need to yes. tell it the 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 name of this. I'll just call it um <laughs> find bump media. <laughs> um, oh mind pump. Okay, sorry. Yes, that is. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, like this it. is just okay. a screen grab from an eight-minute video on okay. single joint versus compound joint, or they multi. So that okay. they they spiced it up for us. They said compound, not multi joint. Okay. And okay. He, him and his partner made this list, and um, throughout the video, they spoke in such authority about what compound and single joint means oh okay um what comes i have not seen this video that's interesting yeah. to know that yes. yeah they just go through this list and i i grabbed a couple um quotes from this video to uh kind of paint this picture Okay. Um, and one of them is, quote, all exercises can be placed into these two categories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. And like Peach Pit Friends, like this is just our my way of like kind of showing you what 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 the abundance of sound bites sounds like. Okay. I'm not saying any of these are correct or wrong or anything. This is these are just sound bite quotes. So the next one, quote, single joint exercises are easier to teach and learn. Next one, quote, doesn't teach the body to work in unison. That one, I just grabbed my arm and like put the nail. Because <laughs> our bodies are so stupid sometimes. <laughs> no, my body doesn't know how to work in unison. I was like, I hate it when my arm is like 10 feet ahead of the rest of my body. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh God. Okay, uh, quote, multi-joint builds more muscle. <laughs> quote, takes years of perfection to learn multi-joint exercises. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Years yeah. of practice. <laughs> years of practice or, you know, 10 minutes in a warm-up. Um, yeah. <laughs> quote, almost every day you work out in the gym, there should be at least one compound lift, if not multiple. So... Mm just speaking with like this outrageous amount of authority that we yeah. all should do something and right. ah, gosh. Okay. So I I'd like to just point out, I have multiple problems with making a list like this and sure. not, sure. and, and creating and making it like such a, you know, an, Demonstrative. an absolute, yeah. Yeah. I think there's yeah. a lot of room for nuance in this conversation and they're not allowing for it. Sure. I mean, I, again, I like, I, um, the nature of the world and like attention span these days, um, okay. is just <laughs> so much across the board, like very, like people want these, like, you know, and even better, I don't even have to listen to what he's saying. I just look at like that one clip and like, I've got it all right. And that's why I love what we do so much on here is that we have the opportunity in the space and people, um, that want to go more in depth with that, because, you know, for so many of the things, well, everything that's listed on that board, I could come up with something that's like, well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can think of that, you know, like multiple examples of where that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah so it's frustrating. It's, it's frustrating. Yeah. And cringy. <laughs> yeah, it's very cringy. Yeah, very, very cringy. But I can also that... see how people get pulled in and like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, this is easy for me to like clearly see what he's saying. You know, it takes a little more like time and thought and consideration to actually go deeper mm -hmm. than yeah. just a little dry erase board. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. 
but they prepped it beforehand. He didn't write it out. Oh, okay. The, yeah, so he was ready to go. <laughs> I would have liked better handwriting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So the the way that I thought it would be good that I organized my thoughts, basically, yes. was that okay. there are different teams on this yes. whole entire uh, spectrum of bipolar what uh, multi-joint and single mm. joint exercises. So just as to be clear, again, like I don't think there's anything wrong with either type of exercise. I think there are more than two classes of exercises and um, yeah, nothing's good or bad. <laughs> so I'll just say that going into this. I agree with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so our binary topics like this just mean that there's little room for nuance and exception to just like the their perfect example or their high tolerance athlete you know what I mean like Mm. yeah yes because I think that all of this right at, at the crux of it we're talking about what exercise is better for strength gains right or for an athlete or but like right just in that there are so many different goals that a person could have. Well, one of the things that they bring up in their whiteboard lecture oh, is yes. that, you know, the single joint exercises don't transfer over to sports, which hmm. I will argue, I I will dig my heels in the ground to argue that. Like I would, you know, I... Well, how could there not be any transfer? Yeah, like, no. how could there not be? I mean, like, that would be more impressive to me. Hmm. If there was, if there was, I don't know, like, um, I, you know, um, I would like to see an example of something where somebody does something and like, it doesn't improve something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, to, to, unless it's too much, unless it's too much stress, mm-hmm. somebody does one exercise and often like, uh, that, yeah, I just don't understand. Like, I would like to see a study that shows that there is no benefit. Well, you know? I think there's a, yeah, I think. Yeah, that yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Sorry, that's like down a different path. You were talking about you know, you were talking about a paper that was using the squat as the um, I guess the measurement tool, the observation tool, and I mean, the truth is, anything if if you measure something in inside the exercise paradigm, like you can improve it. You know what I mean? As, right. as long as like, as long even as if it's like a, yeah. an endurance thing or yeah. like a, like a pathway an energy pathway thing. What I thought was so interesting about that article is just that, so they had picked a group that only did multi joint exercises and a group that only did single joint exercises. Now I have a hang up with like how they defined or not defined, but the exercises they chose, I thought, well, you could argue that those are actually multi joint exercises, but mm-hmm. cause they cross multiple joints, but, mm-hmm. um, But what I thought was interesting was they found no difference. So there was a group that was only doing leg extensions. And then there was a group that was only doing squats. And at the end, both had strength gains in the squat. Oh, that's interesting. And I think it would have been interesting for them to see if both of them had strength gains at the end range of a leg extension, because Mm -hmm. the squat people aren't really like challenging end range leg extension they're just balanced at the top of their squat whereas the people on the leg extension are actually challenging maybe through more part of the for a greater part of the range than the squat people Mm. so I was like wow you could just do a leg extension and improve your squat I mean which makes sense but also there's a lot (laughs) of other stuff going on in the squat that like wouldn't necessarily get stronger just because of a leg extension so I don't know yeah Oh. Yeah, no, I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Magical. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about getting good at measuring things. And yeah, yeah so when it comes down to this, again, like, there, there's no one better type of exercise than the other. So my team uh, breakdown <laughs> here. Yes, yes. The very, Give it to uh, me. So I put the very popular classic team is that movement patterns should be trained as opposed to individual muscles and muscle groups and that multi-planar movement is better than a single plane of movement. I think that mm. comes up a lot in this mm. uh, category of, um, you know, a bias, in the, bias in the internet. So yeah, multi-planar, single plane, uh, there's room for all of it. Um, 
and there's just there's I don't know yeah movement patterns like it's like the guys at fitness for consumption have talked about this a bunch yeah um that it's not necessarily a thing that you can monitor a thing that you can measure and you can't measure function like back to our conversation on function right. and functional training um and even even some of the studies that do um you know they're again like looking at they're looking they're taking the thing that they want to improve and creating a narrative around it because right. they're using that thing to measure against the other thing you didn't yeah that. no I mean I, there are so many things that come up it's like hard to know because like it's like well okay what makes up multi-planar like <laughs> single planes like a, like uh it's just a combination of those single plane things and what makes up a multi-joint exercise is like torque around individual joints that's put together and the same thing with like movement patterns or it's like okay but if we just keep training the pattern and don't actually break the pieces down will the strong stuff keep getting stronger and the weak stuff keep getting weaker like will we will we blow through some of the opportunities to improve strength by just focusing mm -hmm. on our visual what we see happening, not actually what might act be going on inside of someone's individual body. You know, you, you can make something look the same and be using a different recruitment mm -hmm. of muscles. Um, and you wouldn't necessarily know that unless you backed up a little bit and like assess what was actually happening at individual potentially, you know, joints yeah. or muscles. That's, an awesome breakdown of that. <laughs> I love it because yeah, the, like, that's a, that's a piece of nuance that really, um, is kind of invisible by, <laughs> by, by definite, you know, by, by nature, like it, just because you can't see it doesn't mean right. it's not real. And that's the whole like point of being able to be a, 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 a highly qualified exercise professionals understanding the forces and the things that we can't see and that there's so much being so many times we're being misled by just following what we can see right and oh and like it's that. really hard there's so much going on you know um so I thought it was I think in, in this looking up stuff for this podcast they classify like a crunch as a single joint exercise. Like some Whoa. people do. Right. And I'm like, OMG, like, or like a plank, right? Like maybe a plank. I didn't see it under that, but it's just like, it's just like, it's almost like we're confusing. If it's not moving, then it's all just hap like, like, so one of the things that they use as for a single joint exercise is um, like a pec fly. And it's like, well, but it's crossing. If I'm holding a dumbbell or a, like a handle at a gym and my, then it's crossing my elbow. It's crossing my wrist. It's crossing all of my like finger joints and stuff. And like, there's a whole lot going on. Yes. Yes. That even though my eyes are like, oh, well, I'm just moving one in one piece, not like a squat where I'm folding up and all that stuff. It's just it's so, <laughs> I just, yeah, right? so like, by the, that the idea of the crunch is like, a, I was just like, oh, yeah, I, you <laughs> can't even say, yeah, and not even a sit up can be a single joint exercise. If if you're doing a perfect right, like hip flexion <laughs> up or and something, down motion. Hip, yeah. <laughs> but even to the to the same idea, a lot of the things that we would call single joint, you know, or like isolated exercises. So, like say, like a bicep curl, people would think of that as being like an isolated exercise. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like the way I often see people doing that in a gym. There's so much happening at the ankle, hip, spine, shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and if you were really focused on just activating or just using your bicep, it takes a lot of freaking energy to hold all the other parts still. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, that we could sit down and take some of the things out of it or, but I just think that a lot of the things that we think of as being even a leg extension, think mm -hmm. about the effort that you're, if you don't have a seat belt that you're using to hold yourself down into the chair. Well, I, right there, I'm using another part of my body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's often like the more specific we get is often more challenging 
because mm-hmm. it's so easy sometimes to cheat and blow through, a, you mm-hmm. know, to, to, to make it easier. So without even realizing that we're doing that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like blow through, I think you're meaning like, um, not like the lack of control and stability. Yeah. Like not holding. Yes, absolutely. And love that perspective because it gives us like some, uh, freedom and some creativity to work with an exercise that looks pretty simple Mm. and is just not like, and I, I think, um, there's a real, like, I, th- I think there's a real creativity to being able to execute that with yourself and with your client. I, and I also like personally find it rewarding to execute an exercise that way. Okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> so <Okay>. another <laughs> another popular team would be the exercise has to look super similar to the everyday movement. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I got a funny parody to show Wait, you. Is this, um, okay, please do. <laughs> Does this team have an Instagram guy? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, so now this is Oh, (gasps) no. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) No way. But see, (laughs) this is, oh, geez. So if his caption is, good thing we all do these functional exercises right, just doing functional exercise does not mean you'll have a functional body. So what he's doing is this parody of like- Making fun of. Yeah. Being like, if we do this exercise super perfect and uh, choreographed, right. we'll be able to carry it over into everyday life. Right. And he then he says, if you're doing compound movements, movements and you have limitations at certain joints, other joints will need to compensate, which can leave those areas more susceptible to injury. What? Okay, so this is he has a lot to say about this and a lot of hashtags so yeah there's other examples of this that i think are freaking hilarious oh no (laughs) perfect posture oh my god (laughs) yeah right (laughs) so i think like uh this doesn't exactly fit into our multi-joint compound joint whatever conversation but the perfect posture thing does feed into this that's funny He's getting yeah, a water that's bottle. Funny. He can't yeah, reduce. yeah. <laughs> so no, I mean, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so hilarious. Yeah. So <laughs> in perfect posture. Yeah. We can't live in perfect posture. So according to him, there's no point in training perfect posture making. Mm. I don't know. Something like that. And then he does the opposite. Okay. Okay. Which is um then says like you have to train full range at every joint wait he he says wait but in like the same exercise no or just generally he says conventional exercise okay if you feel oh, old yeah <laughs> this is his exercise <laughs> at the end of the day oh so okay this is him uh, not neglecting all of his tissues is doing these oh, like, extreme range wow. push-ups which I don't know. He just okay. looks like kind of a gymnast. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I always think that that's, and that it just comes <laughs> up like it's so right. Um, it's so impressive, right? Sometimes when people can do these really crazy things with their bodies, and I think that that a lot of the things that he's doing are not like things that most of would that I would recommend for people. No. I think it's like potentially in, injurious. You know, like yeah. I, um. Uh, yeah so the first one it's the first slide yeah he says like if you do conventional exercises you're ignoring Uh, like so much which is the beef i have you don't yeah yeah i mean see to me like like what i said earlier about the squat like you're missing you could put a lot more force potentially or like an appropriate force against your quads using a leg extension more than you could at the top of a squat so like, I think you actually have more opportunity sometimes to break things down because like these, you know, same way, like, do I ever, <laughs> I mean, I don't really, but like, do I ever go into full hip extension and try to do like leg extension, knee extension from that position? <laughs> no, I, I really don't generally train that range, but, <laughs> but like the opportunity really isn't in any of our compound traditional compound movement. It's not in a squat. It's not in a deadlift. It's not in a bench press. It's not in a pull-up, right? Like mm-hmm. I, those are like sort of, um, but I also think that that's, it's so interesting to me 
yeah, like how we have this obsession, same thing though, like, um, with people who can do like crazy things with their body. So like I started working out at a new gym Mm -hmm. and it's an anytime fitness Mm -hmm. and, um, they show it all on a loop people doing like ridiculous things like triple flips and blah, blah, blah. And like, just constantly, it's like, we'll just like go in and out from like, and it's like, wow, that's impressive. Mm. But I don't feel motivated by it because it feels like it's so not what I'm here to do. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. cool that people can. And so I think like for that, like it's so like Instagram worthy, you know, mm-hmm. or not, it's not worthy, but like it's, it's popular on Instagram because mm-hmm. people like things that are like, wow, it's crazy. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I hate that that's uh, what we have, like what uh, so many people like look up to. Yeah. Like that. Or think, like I should be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Or like yeah. even like looking at like a yoga instructor and being like, oh, I should be able to do that with my body. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, um, I just think it's so interesting and it's just kind of the world. we Yeah. Live in right even now, something but... as simple as um, sitting uh, butt to heels in a yoga pose oh right 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 like there are very common that's a very common misconception like if that is not possible for a lot of the population right. and even that position of plants reflection in child's pose or something yep. I think yep. I have certainly have that come up with my clients occasionally mm-hmm. where like or often where that's just not a comfortable position and there's cramping and there's all kinds of like Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily the idea, like where your gravity forces your body to go. <laughs> yeah. And again, like if you're, but I mean, if the goal is to um, increase the tolerance of force at your foot, it might be a good exercise. Right. But sure. if it's for child's pose, which in, it suggests to me that you're trying to relax, that ain't it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, it's a, like, I always think it's like a good marker. Like if we work on some plantar flexion exercises, like would yeah. that position eventually feel more comfortable to you if, if that's something that you it bothers you but like mm-hmm. I think that's what's so great about having all of these different exercise options mm-hmm. single joint multi-joint I don't care what you call it like and I don't think our bodies really care either mm-hmm. you know the fact that mm-hmm. we classify mm-hmm. these things and have like very two distinct classifications the same way that I don't think our bodies really care if it's open chain or closed chain. It's just something that like got created for people to jump onto the, into teams, you know, yeah. and then like hate against <laughs> this side and hate against that side. And I'm on team, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, I, it's yeah. Well, I think that brings up, that's a great oh, no. uh, intro into the next team, which is <laughs> oh, team muscle me. memory. <laughs> Team muscle oh, memory. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can you, wait, can tell me more about like, I don't, what does that mean even really? Like, um, okay. Well, I've explored that term muscle memory yeah. so, in so, from so many different angles. Right. Okay. How, okay. So, so in, yeah. for the multi-joint, <laughs> um, for the multi-joint single joint, uh, perspective, if we go back to our first example, with mind pump right uh he specifically said like your body (laughs) doesn't learn to work in unison if you don't use multi-joint exercises so that argument relies on something that has been passed down (laughs) from you know year to year throughout the fitness industry and who knows where it started i'm pj probably knows um which is uh, this idea of our muscle memory and that yeah. our body can rely on certain, uh, I guess, memories to perform exercises. So it's like, I, I forgot how to <laughs> drink out of my water bottle. So I have to practice drinking different, I don't know, con- out of different containers or something. Um, (laughs) the other way that people look at it, uh, um, is in like a skill acquisition and sports. um, Okay. I was going to say, I think the first time I heard this was like in ballet, like Mm -hmm. when I was really young and it, but, and it, which makes sense to me in terms of like, maybe you become more efficient, the more you do something Mm -hmm. complex, like, Mm -hmm. you know, a sport or like, you know, that you don't have to think as hard about. Like, mm-hmm. well, how do I want to do this? And what am I trying to do? And it just becomes sort of second nature. Mm-hmm. But that's interesting to extrapolate that, like, 
because I do a leg extension that my body will forget how to walk properly. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Or <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think the main issue with this whole like term is that it's taken out of context all the time and that the context in general from the, from the very foundation of this term is not well defined. Okay. Um, because you could look at muscle memory as just muscle phenotype, meaning like, okay. you know, fast twitch, slow twitch. Yeah. Um, and that's how the muscle functions. Like you okay. can, you that can would be it. kind of interesting. Mm hmm. Um, so the amount of motor units yeah. and how fast it recruits. Yeah. Um, and I think in literature, that's what they're talking about. Right. And that actually and, sounds kind of cool and like potentially. Yeah. 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 Um, which I think would technically fall mm -hmm. under the category of uh, neuromechanics, maybe. No. Okay. Physiology. Not necessarily physiology, but. Um, something about the muscle physiology, mm -hmm. uh, which has nothing to do with how we perform something, how we, how it looks, what it, and, and it's right. taken out of context, I think most of the time to say, okay, multi-joint exercises teach us better movement because of muscle memory. Mm. So. I'm claiming that's what this team is saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm not team that. <laughs> no. Yeah. And Imagine, then I want to not be on any team. Can I be on like team? Oh, pitch, of course. Pitch pit? Yeah. I mean, we'll yeah. Like we said before, we're, you know, the welcoming pad for yeah. uh, thoughts and yes, ideas yes, yes. and questions. <laughs> okay. I like um, that. I can get on board with that. But I think like the other side of this, debate is this like there's people that you know are so anatomy focused mm. um almost to the point where they uh you know discourage the use of what mm. we what some people call compound movements okay and that th that there's like there's some kind of argument like against using them a lot and i think mm. what i'm trying to say is this could be some of our colleagues like they're okay. so focused on that internal performance piece okay. that they forget that there's been, there's like a whole spectrum yeah. of, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's not just, uh, you know, team pro compound multi-joint movements. I think right. there's a whole, there is another part side of this and, um, and I can think of it in, I think the way that I've thought about it is how someone that's very pro, um, I don't want to say single joint, let's say, just say uh, controlled machine maneuvers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Exercises. <laughs> okay. Um, might, like, I think could be too focused on the internal cueing and internal mm. focus of the body. Mm that it can hurt the progress of or hurt the progress of them of their client or themselves okay. it's like you're getting too stuck in the body yeah to experience just fluid like yeah you know uh yeah to, to experience the other side of that and sure. uh, i know i've gotten into that trap so i guess that what i'm talking through is like one of the points that i like try to work through in my own practice. Yeah. And that, especially when I'm like working in like this rehab setting where if I guide someone to focus too much internally, it creates like this anxious dialogue yeah. to them, yeah. which is actually hurting their progress. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Which I've done to I myself think a million times. For sure. And I definitely <laughs> think that sometimes like being so internally focused can actually be really taxing mentally because it does take a lot of mental effort. And sometimes like, I feel like, like you said, sort of like, it can really make people feel like to focus too much on that can make people feel like they're not doing a good job or like, they're like worried about like what, if it's coming from the right place or, <laughs> you know, and sometimes you just, you do just need to move and you need to explore. And like, that's why I think, you know, I love so many of the things we talk about because like, 
at least for me, it's usually like neither end of the spectrum, right? It's like Mm -hmm. trying to find, and like each person might be a little bit different, each client, each, and that might be different on each day about like, if somebody's had a really stressful, you know, week at work or something, like they may not be in a position where they really can like mentally focus in the same way that they could on another day. And, um, Mm -hmm. so I think having all these options and even Mm -hmm. for people, um, you know, that struggles sort of to find joy in working out, Mm -hmm. which I'm Mm -hmm. not saying like every day is like the most joyful, but like, if you're trying to really commit to a regular physical activity exercise program in your life, like having all of these choices and options and knowing when and why you might want to bias more towards one direction or towards another direction is like what helps keep you, I think, interested and going and keeping it fun and like curious. And so. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, there's some point where, you know, exercise, the, the majority of our population is under exercising. Right. So to say that, um, you know, yeah, to, to rely on one type of exercise, um, might not be a good way for us to conduct ourselves, but if you're trying to get that first month of movement under your, under your belt, and you need to believe that these multi joint movements Mm -hmm. are the best thing for you. I mean, I could get on that team for that very short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that too. Like I, you brought up something a while ago in a different podcast that, that has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the things you say stick with me, but like, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, because, you know, I think I sometimes, uh, have gotten into these spaces where I like really feel like, oh, I sh- you should come to exercise for this reason. Or mm-hmm. like, because you like care about yourself and you're healthy and you want to be healthier and these like positive, like optimistic, blah, blah, blah. And I think that that's not reasonable. Like mm-hmm. sometimes we come to things just the, we, we open the door where we open it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's because we're unhappy with mm-hmm. like the way we feel. Right. And that's just as good of a, it doesn't always have to, or sometimes we, we are trying to like fit back into our dress that we wore in high school or something like that, you know, and that's not, maybe not the best, like long-term motivation, Mm -hmm. but like, sometimes those things are what like sparks Mm. ignites. And so like, like you said, you know, you see a video and you get inspired because like somebody's doing this, like multi-joint exercise and you're like, wow, I really want to be able to do that. Or I Mm -hmm. am inspired to go try that myself. Like, obviously we always want you to be responsible and safe, but like you come to it where you come to it from. And that's, Mm -hmm. That means that any entry is kind of like a good one, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. and we all have learned, right? From, we've all had like things that maybe weren't the healthiest or it's Mm -hmm. starting on the path. Yeah. And it's, it's just such a blessing that like exercise is a place where you can fail safely. Mm -hmm. Um, in a way, like, yeah, like it can, it can go much, it can definitely go the other way. But it's, um, it's not a place yes. where like, if you make a, the, like the lesser of two, the lesser, you can choose a lesser evil in a way. Yes. yes. And, um, I think that's like a really good thing. And, it, and it's the reason, one of the reasons why I encourage, uh, I, you know, I, I encourage like this physical confidence and bliss in people. Mm. It's like yeah you can explore I mean and yeah I think that's just like the beauty of exercise like being able to fail a little bit and learn a little bit it's like it's like why we want our kids in sports like I'd much rather a child like make a bad decision on the field right than be uh rebellious around the oven like like, and make a bad decision like or like and learn how to overcome like, or, or decide, like, how do I want to approach it next time? Or, and like, I think that's, yeah, a great example. Cause, and it's not to say that we always make the right choice the next time either. Like sometimes Mm -hmm. it takes like a long time of, and and is there a right choice or wrong choice? I don't know. Maybe there's more maybe, but, um, yeah, I, Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that too. I like the metaphor of exercise for so many things that go on in life. Right. Because it's Mm -hmm. it's a place to practice failing. It's a place, place to like, 
practice pushing, Mm -hmm. pushing too much sometimes and having to pull back, Mm -hmm. not pushing enough and not getting results. (laughs) They're just (laughs) right. I mean, there's just so many different ways that you can yeah, yep. go with it. Spin it. Spin Wicca, it. Wicca. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. like, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that like sums it up. I mean, I think we could okay. say some things about like where, you know, kind of evidence-based goes wrong in this category too. Mm. And what, that, what, it, what comes to mind on that just subject being evidence-based, um, and there are, and, 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 you know, this whole topic was kind of inspired by our last guest, Brad Schoenfeld, right. who has published work on multi-joint exercise and single joint exercise. And he leaves a lot of room in his like analysis and his like, like, um, what do you call it? Uh, reviews, which means a review means like, it's like a statement that he's putting out on like what's good and what's, you know, what's helpful basically. And the stuff that he's like putting out about multi-joint training is pretty basic, like exercise physiology, like that, you know, sets per muscle group using six to 15 Mm -hmm. reps is like the loading range you should use. Like that is super generic. Um, (laughs) Six to 15 reps is pretty generic. And, um, so anyways, so I think what it comes down to is if we're not careful, even this evidence-based thing imposes bias and imposes expectations on Mm -hmm. what our body, you know, should be able to do and that there's no exception for, um, basically like, you know, most of the population, which is like arthritis and, you know, things like that. I'm so grateful that there are people out there that want to take on research and, cause I think it can be really, I, I can't even imagine how challenging it can be, <laughs> um, even to create scenarios that are like very, especially with exercise, you know, because I just think that there's so much that's not apples to apples. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I think like you said, like, I think we need to look at it and understand what it's, but that, but then also be open to like, there still being places where it doesn't fit for an individual where there still might be a better, like you still have to listen to your own body and see what feels right for you. And also keep in mind that like, studies can be flawed. There can be things that aren't quite, or that that people don't really know yet for sure. Like you can like, you can look at like one very specific aspect and maybe get some information that moves you in a direction, but be open to the fact that like, there could be another paper that contradicts that and Mm -hmm. found another. And so I just think it's great to have these things. And I, um, I'm grateful for people to people for taking on research. Yeah. And the more, (laughs) yeah. And the more like controlled and precise, like these research things are research environments are the more like the more the less likely it is to look like it does out in the real world you know like yeah brad we're talking about doing muscle biopsies and things like that right and um doing only exercise on one leg for 12 weeks and (laughs) like that is very unlikely that's a very unlikely scenario at my gym. Right, right, (laughs) right. No, no. And I mean, like, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't, unless I had like a broke, you know, something that I, where I couldn't use the other leg. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it's so interesting. It's so great that people are willing to sign up for that. It's Mm -hmm. so great that people are willing to like conduct that research. I think it's so cool and it moves, it pushes things forward, right? It moves things forward and gives us more understanding than we had before, but it also doesn't necessarily mean it's definitive. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I would, for our listeners, like the tangible advice, I mean, takeaway, not that we have much advice for anyone, but, um, (laughs) we, we have takeaways (laughs) and I think, um, it's, it's more important to be involved in like, does this exercise, you know, 
help me measure? Does it help me like, does it help support my goal? Does it help solve a problem? Um, I think those are the more important aspects of an exercise. And I, I, and I believe that the more committed we are to exercise, the more important it is to learn about your body, how your body moves and like what, what joint forces are like just some like beginner stuff about how the body moves under load and um and again you know it's like and i said like the more committed you are because it's just not for our beginners right like it, i mean it could be if that's how you want to begin but you know if i had a piece of advice out that comes out of this conversation i think it's that you know and also to like think twice about your assumptions about exercise and the assumptions coming at you from social media yeah. and YouTube. Yeah. I was going to say, be cautious when you <laughs> yeah. click on your YouTube videos and, you know, watch Instagram and yeah. yeah. Cause like the, the, your exercise outcomes are at the mercy of what your instructor knows. They're creating possible outcomes for you. And then, and I think, um, yeah, we're at the mercy of their bias. You know what I mean? And like, that's, I think, I, I think that's important to, un, to like really understand when you're going into like an exercise class or, you yeah. know, how much you're paying for exercise. So um, anyways, it's a long-term mm -hmm. endeav endeavor in a, <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think it gives people things to think about and, you know, and just uh, question it. If you have, if, if you're questioning it, okay. Like that's okay. You yeah. know, and why, what what's bad about that? What's good about that? What's, why is this team? Yeah. And mm -hmm. just keeping an open mind and trusting, yeah. trusting your own process, yeah. no matter where you are in that process. Which, um, yeah, another perfect segue there to mm. our, our 90s throwback. If I can turn that time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it. Sorry. Oh my gosh. So um yeah, it's Cher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's our she's our uh 90s icon for today, our inspo. Mm. Inspa. <laughs> and <Inspa>. she <laughs> She, uh, I found this quote, it says fitness. If it came in a bottle, everybody would have a great body. Mm, and I think that's sure. okay. She, yeah. so I'm not going to lie. Like I'm, I, I'm always inspired by Cher because she's like, so her own person and yeah. there's no fluff. Yeah, and, no, I, yes. But man, I, does, she, does she spew some toxic stuff about the body well, in some of these interviews? You know, <laughs> yeah yes but the like the interview that I you sent me from YouTube um it was like in 1991 yeah I think I and I what I really appreciated about that was like I don't think she would probably say the same thing today mm -hmm. you know like I think a lot of us in 91 I think we've actually made it actually made me realize like how much maybe progress there's been in the last 30 years in terms of being more aware of like just stupid things about like oh like this is a beach body or this is like I need to you know she she said and, and like I again to your point like she was she, I love that she's speaks her mind and she's a powerful force right mm -hmm. but she, and she was saying you know like uh it you know I just didn't feel as good like I was, I had, I was a little more round than I wanted to be, but like, I, but I also just didn't really feel very good. Mm -hmm. And like, so, you know, I, yeah. I think we have to allow for some of that being from like the early nineties and gosh, that was like so much like Susan powder and like fat free snack wells everywhere. And yeah, snack wells, yeah. There was so yeah. much, like, I, I think maybe, I mean, maybe we've gone a, down another path, that's, but I, I think generally speaking, a lot more people have more awareness of like different body types, different body shapes, the beauty in different bodies and, mm. you know, than they did maybe in 1991.
Yeah. Um, and you know, the way that she confidently displays her body again, mm. <laughs> what people ex- wanted her to do, you know, yeah, um, forgotten, like she was very, I had forgotten. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was going to award shows pretty much naked. Wow. Remember the glitter dress? It, yeah oh yeah yeah I Brittany that had was a like version earlier though like um, that was like that was like later than the 19, yeah that like, was right like in the early no. 2000s maybe or something no, no 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 that was um no that was not oh. that was in the 80s that was oh, that was wow. right after she broke up with Sunny. so I I did watch oh. several oh, go interviews with that. her right now so there's okay. a interview specifically um it's a series that Vogue puts on okay and it's icons basically going through their lookbook and making comments about where the outfit came from uh some of the fitting notes like how they felt in it and so she's going through this massive book of her from i mean like she was an icon in the 70s and so in 1991 she was well into her (laughs) mid-30s okay yeah (laughs) but so she was really young when she started yeah um and then um the funny thing about all of this is i have to plug uh an interview from 2020 Mm -hmm. on fitness for consumption which was with kelly roberts who was Cher's trainer and uh choreographed her uh, exercise video um, her book, so Cher's book is called Forever Fit. And then a year later in 1992, she came out with her, this like step video. Oh, and okay. This woman, Kelly Roberts, choreographed the whole thing and she's in it. Wow. Oh, wow. That's and awesome. she was on Fitness for Consumption uh, okay. at the end of 2020. So we're going to link to that. Awesome. So you can hear right from her. Um, I also found an inter- an interview from 2019 with Cher and she said that she loves Zumba and it's that it's nerdy. And I was like, girl, that is not nerdy. Mm, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, we'll show you nerdy. <laughs> but she, um, wow. Okay. That makes kind of sense. Cause like a lot of her, it looked like some of her fitness stuff, her exercise, you know, had like some, some of that dancey fit, mm-hmm. fitness, dancey elements, like the aerobic style class type. Yeah, feel. I saw a lot of aerobics, a lot of step. Yeah. And I mean, you know, she has to dance. That's her that was her yeah. living. So um, I guess to her that was like, you know, functional fitness and <laughs> um I've never I, I don't know if I, I think I took one Zumba class in my life and I was like, Yeah, I don't yeah. know. But I didn't like that the floor was so like sticky and you couldn't really spin. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. So. I just didn't vibe with it. But I know people love it. I mean, it's been going pretty strong for a while. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You know, yeah. Dance fitness is going nowhere. Um, Mm. (laughs) And yeah, I just, I don't know. I thought it was a good nod to the nineties. I mean, yeah, she's a multi-decade decade. She's a multi-decade figure. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. And man, and I just, I I just love that it's just another part of her image, which is like she's just fully in her power and just really owns like her image yeah. um, and that fitness is a part of it. And even though like there was a lot of like through through all the stuff that I look through, there was a lot of um And there are like tabloids and things that like she was obsessed with exercise and, Mm. and that that was a bad thing. And, um, so, you know, there's always a way to spin it, I guess. Um, but the other piece of it is that she has, um, and in the nineties, she, she was talking about this, she has Epstein Barr and she was talking about how exercise was just like such a part of her, you know, care process. And that it wasn't just because, you know, she felt a little bit more quote unquote round at points. Like she, she really felt that um, fatigue 
related to her work and Epstein Barr was, you know, exercise was a remedy for that. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting too. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't think, uh, I didn't get the feeling that she was, you know, being judgmental of others, you know, I, that she really appreciated how she felt when she was exercising regularly and taking care of herself. Um, so <laughs> that's the book cover. That's no, that's the, awesome. that's the, uh, the video cover. That's so, yeah. What is she up to today? I, I haven't well, seen she's her well in into her seventies, if not okay. closer to 80. Um, the last interview I saw was in 2019 and she looked great. I mean, yeah. And she was blonde by the way. So I don't oh, know what okay. that's all about. Okay. But, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Have hair people. Maybe it's a yeah. wig. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Well, she yeah. said she, she was, she wore a wig most of the time mm. in the Vogue, in that's the Vogue so interview. Yeah. There was one picture where she had um, very little hair and she goes, oh, that was my skunk phase because it was black and white. Oh. And she goes, she goes, I remember that because I wasn't wearing a wig. And she was like, and I felt so good. And I love those earrings. And she like turned, she just Aww. turned the page. She goes, next. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's a All right, I'm going to have to do a little more research on Cher. Go look at some more yeah. videos and check it out. Get yes. her book maybe. Yeah, she's got um yeah, she's got a quite a fitness vibe. So hands yeah, on the hips. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I figured Very her cool. hands would be bigger. She's a tall woman. Hmm. Questioning that. Well, they could have photoshopped them yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> you know these people in their Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And uh yeah, I think yeah, that's a that's a that's a real exercise vibe there. Yeah. Um, here's a picture of the video. There's, there she Aww, is right there. Look at that outfit. So good. I, I know the one that you sent me earlier on YouTube. I loved the outfit. It was like, yeah, that one. I love Got that. Whole tail. I want that out. I want that. <laughs> it's like, it looks like a little tutu. Yeah. Kind of like a little so the, mini. That yeah, woman that. closest to us. <laughs> that's Kelly Roberts. Oh, nice. That's so cool. Yeah. What about the socks? How do you feel about the socks? I love them. I Crunchy. have some like that. Yeah, Chunky, I scrunchy socks. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I totally have those. I have them in yeah. black, white, pink, lavender, fuchsia. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, all threadies. right. So here's somebody's comment. She goes, so this dates me a lot, but that VHS tape was the beginning of my journey in the group ex exercise. I had a wooden step with oh carpet gosh. on the wow. top. And while I only had shorts and t-shirts to wear, since you all weren't even born yet, I stepped my Aww. heart out with Kelly Roberts and Cher. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, that's so cute. I love it. Great comment. All right. Okay. So, it. um, man, I can't wait to find our next, uh, 90s inspiration. Mm. One of my favorite parts. <laughs> mm -hmm. and... I know you're so good at that. I'm like, <laughs> how do you know all this 90s stuff? I don't, I lived it, but I don't remember any yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. We don't know what we're going to talk about next time. We have some ideas, but as always, we're so open to y'all's ideas and questions. And, um, please give us a follow on Instagram at thinkfitbefit underscore podcast. I'm at Jennifer underscore Simone underscore Schwartz. Meredith is Meredith at underscore Mac, right? Yes. Got all that underscore underscore Mac. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> underscore, underscore, underscore. Yes. And yes. um, yeah. Well, time to take Bowie out to the dog park. Uh, and yeah. I'm gonna see if he's if David Bowie's our fitness inspo. Yes. I don't Ooh, think so. he might be though. I don't know. That's a good one. I don't I'm know. Look into that. That could be that could definitely be interesting. Yeah. I feel like rock stars like get would get their fitness from like being in the studio for hours at a time, obsessing Maybe. over like the same. I don't know. I feel like he could be into yoga or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. Anyways. All right. All thank right. you guys for listening. Thank you. Have a great day.